I'm online about a minute early, so we'll wait till a few people join. But this is the project we're going to make today. Super cute. Perfect for a Ferrero Rocher or a Lindor truffle. Both will fit. So we'll wait a couple minutes till folks join. Again, I'm a little bit early, so we'll wait another minute or two before folks join and we'll get started. I have a couple of announcements to make first and I want to tell you something funny I did today and then we'll get started making this super cute project. Quick and easy to make, doesn't take a lot of paper. It just takes a um, 3 inch by 5 inch piece of designer series paper and a teeny tiny strip for the handle, but it's a great project to make multiples of. So super cute. This uses that new coffee cafe bundle and um, I just love this bundle super cute thanks a lot Tay so we'll go ahead and get started in just a minute we've got a few folks joining thanks everyone for joining I appreciate it happy Wednesday happy hump day <laughs> I love the color combination in this paper as well I'll show it before we get started there's this beautiful set of designer series paper called Coffee Break and we've got colors like um, Soft Sky and Garden Green, Early Espresso, what else am I missing? Pear Pizzazz, Soft, soft Suede, There's some really cool patterns. We're going to use this paper here with the little hearts on it. There's a coordinating stamp set too that goes with this so we'll get started. And I want to make a couple of announcements before we get into today's project. So again, we're going to be making the super sweet Ferrero Rocher or Lindor Truffle coffee mug. Thanks everyone for hopping in. I appreciate you joining me live. Really quick, I want to talk about two incredible promotions going on for the month of July. The first one, which is the best of the two, is a starter kit um, special and for $99 free shipping. I do think you have to pay taxes depending on what state you live in, but you will get $197 worth of goodies. So real quick, I want to show you you'll get a stack of grid paper. Hi Jackie, hi Robbie, thanks for joining. A stack of grid paper um, comes with 100 sheets and I swear these things last me forever because um, you can use one piece of grid paper for many projects till it gets gunky enough that you got to start with a new one, but it will also come with a bone folder and as for those of you that know me I love my bone folder <laughs> paper snips which are some of the best paper scissors out there two D size clear blocks these are the most popular size and perfect to get you started for using clear mount or photopolymer stamp sets you'll get a snail adhesive which this is a fantastic adhesive and then there's a stamp set which I don't have to show you but it's got it's a $20 value it is a Christmas set called carols of Christmas excuse me carols of Christmas so in total for $99 you get to pick $125 worth of anything you want plus you're gonna get 72 more dollars worth of goodies and that's what all of this is plus the carols of Christmas stamp set so total no-brainer $99 gets you $197 worth of product and I would love to have you on my team of paper pixies so if you're interested stop by my blog at thepaperpixie.com I have a join my team link in the upper menu um, over on the right side of the menu and I'd love to have you kind of check out my top 10 reasons for joining Stampin' Up! and why it's changed my life and I would love to share it with you so that's the first special the second special is that um, let's see for every fifty dollars you spend you'll get a five dollar coupon to spend in the month of August now in the month of August there will be an exclusive bundle that will be available from our holiday catalog so it's a great way to earn some extra cash so that you can buy that new Christmas bundle and there's no limit to how many coupons you can earn you just have to make sure that you spend at least fifty dollars in one order to get the five dollar coupon you couldn't do two orders of 25 so those are the two specials I also have those specials kind of explained a little bit further on my blog so feel free to go out there and check out those details and as always you can always reach out to me with any questions 
All right, so we are going to, I'm going to share something really quick today. So as I, I love to do uh, three-dimensional projects, again, this is what we're doing today. And I want to thank everyone who's been sharing my Facebook Live. I really appreciate that. We'll get some more folks to come in here and join us. Um, but So we're going to be making this super cute coffee mug from the Coffee Cafe Suite. It says, thanks a latte, some super sweet hearts on the handle here, and then it holds a Ferrero Rocher or a Lindor truffle. Both of them are about the same size, so it'll hold either. So in, in anticipation for this project on my lunch break today, I ran over to Target. <laughs> you guys are going to laugh. Okay, so I got a big box of Ferrero Rochers. Pam, this will look familiar to you, but isn't this box gorgeous? I've got to figure out something to do with <laughs> when I'm done going through all these Fer Ferrero Rochers, um, <laughs> what I'll do with the box. Might be something cool to hold embellishments or something. So I stocked up on some Ferrero Rochers, and this is just going to give you a little preview of some of the um, 3D items that I'm going to start um, working on over the next month or so. But I got some Lindor truffles, and again, this will fit in the coffee mug. What else did I get? I got these super cool, these are European chocolates, but I've seen some really cool um, projects with these. Hey, Andrea, thanks for joining. Um, so these Merci chocolates, so keep your eye out for some projects for that. You guys are going to crack up. <laughs> Green and blacks, these are super cool chocolates. We'll come up with some treat favors for those. And let's see, I had a special request from um, a fellow demonstrator, Donna. Shout out to Donna if you're watching. She's interested in a, Kate, uh, a favor for um, some York peppermint patties. So <laughs> um, I will do something fun with that. What else? You guys are going to crack up. Dove promises. I love those. Mini Kit Kats and Reese's chocolates. So... So oh, anyways, that's what I did at lunchtime today. So that was super fun. Let me clear those out of the way and then we will get started on the project. All right, I'm grabbing one Lindor truffle for tonight's project. Yeah, you guys do need, so Andrea says she needs to come to my house to raid my chocolate. You do, you need to save me from all this chocolate, Andrea. <laughs> Because otherwise, you know what I'll do. I'll sit here and craft and be like, oh, I'll just have one more. So anyways, okay. We are going to focus on the Coffee Cafe Suite. So let me show you what we've got going on here. So we've got the Coffee Cafe stamp set. We are going to use this sweet little heart. And we're going to go ahead and use Thanks a Latte. It does come bundled at a bundled price if you're interested in getting the framelits. And we will be using one of the coordinating framelits. Hello, Jessica from Kansas. Thank you for joining. So we'll use that. And again, bundled together, 10% off. You don't have to get them bundled. You just won't have a discount if you buy them separately. So Coffee Cafe Sweet, Coffee Break Designer Series paper. We're using this super sweet heart-shaped paper with that gar beautiful garden green color. Here's a quick flip through of what this Designer Series paper looks like. This designer series paper comes in a 12 inch by 12 inch size. And these guys only use a, so a piece of paper that measures three inches by five inches. So you can get a lot of them out of a 12 by 12. And I apologize, I didn't figure out how many of them ahead of time, um, but I will put that in my blog. So heads up, um, this post will be the details that will be on my blog tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. I will also link this Facebook live video so don't worry about writing down all the dimensions and measurements that will be on my detailed blog post tomorrow and so let's go ahead and get started so first we're gonna start with the coffee break designer series paper that measures five inches by three inches I do want you to pay a little bit attention to the direction so if you were using a directional paper you want the direction to go you know the up and down along the five inch side and that's just going to ensure that your pattern is going the right way around your coffee mug. So we're going to bring in my number one favorite tool as many of you know the Simply Scored and we are going to score where this is a hexagon shaped um, treat holder so there's going to be six score lines along the five inch side again no need to remember these these um, Measurements, they'll be on my blog, but we'll do three quarters of an inch, 
one and a half inches, two and a quarter, three, three and three quarters, and four and a half. And that is essentially every three quarters of an inch. Okay? Then we're going to rotate it and we're going to do three quarters of an inch along the bottom and two and one quarter along the top. Now, I'm going to take a break here really quick. If you wanted your coffee mug to be a little bit shorter, and as you can see, like this truffle is, you know, a little bit deeper inside the coffee mug, you could just alter the width of your starting piece of designer series paper. So this is three inches wide. You could make it smaller, like two and three quarters, two and a half, two and a half might, well, two and a half actually might be kind of cute. Anyways, the trick is you just want your score lines at the bottom and the top to be the three quarter inch. So you can adjust the width as necessary. Okay, so that's all the scoring we're gonna do. Next, what I always like to do is to fold and burnish on all the score lines. If you guys have any questions during the live broadcast, ask away. I'm keeping my eye on comments coming through. And again, thank you so much for joining me during the live broadcast. I always look forward to doing these for you guys every Wednesday night. I'm here every Wednesday from 8 to 8.30 Eastern Time. It's definitely July in Atlanta as I just watched a uh, mosquito <laughs> fly across the screen. You may have seen that. Okay, so we've done all of our folding and burnishing and I'm gonna bring in a little template to kind of show you what we're doing here, okay? So I'd put a note here if your paper was directional that this is the up and down direction. We are going to cut up all of the score lines along the bottom and stopping at that hor the bottom horizontal line. And then we are going, oh, thank you, Robbie Hamilton says, you can get eight of these from a 12 by 12. You're awesome, thank you, Robbie. And then we're gonna cut out and create a little tab here along, we have this little half inch side along the side here, okay? So let me grab my paper snips. I'm gonna create that tab along the side. We're gonna basically cut out that lower corner. Okay, and I notched in ever so slightly. I'm gonna notch in again here and cut out this top corner. Oops. Okay, so we just cut out these two sections here. Yes, app, uh, Robbie said she used the app that I told you guys about in one of my other blog posts. Hold on. See, live, I got him, look. <laughs> Okay, so that's not going to bug us the whole <laughs> broadcast. So anyways, Robbie used an app called Die Cut, D-Y-C-U-T, and it's an awesome app where you can type in the starting size of paper you have and then the smaller size of paper that you want to cut out of it, and it'll give you the layout and how many, like the maximum of that size you can get out of it. So it's just a great way to maximize your paper and not have a ton of waste. So, okay, so I cut out those, the top and bottom corners along the right, and then I'm gonna cut up all of these score lines along the bottom, stopping at that horizontal score line. These are creating the little flaps along the bottom for us to close the bottom of our coffee mug. Now, I've made this project before, but I didn't blog about it. Um, this was my Christmas favors for all the teachers in my, um, my children's classmates at school this past Christmas. I made cute little Christmas coffee mugs. So, um, and everybody got either a, I think they actually all got Lindor truffles because I was worried about the, the hazelnuts and the Ferrero Rocher. All right, before I keep rambling on, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to, actually, I'm going to notch just slightly. This is not 100% necessary here. But we're, what we're doing on this top section is we're going to fold it under like this so we have kind of a stronger edge of this coffee mug. So I'm just notching it so that we can make sure that that lines up nicely. All right, so this is the template. We cut out those corners. We cut up all of these tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out. There will be a picture of this on my blog tomorrow. Okay, then next I'm going to grab some tear and tape adhesive, find the end of that there, 
I'm going to run that along the top edge. This is going to be the edge that we're going to fold down. You can tear it or you can cut it if you want to. And then on the other side of this paper, we are going to use or put a little strip of tear and tape. Okay, so again, we've got tear and tape along this little tab and then tear and tape along the top here. So the first thing I'm going to do is peel this backing off and I am going to push this down except for this last section all the way on the right because ultimately, and I'm only pushing down to that score line right there, I think you can see that, because ultimately we're going to stick this tab <laughs> underneath that folded over. So let me show you that up close. I'm pulling the backing off the tear and tape here and then I'm putting that tab, hopefully you can see that, putting that inside that little fold over because we didn't press all the way down I'm able to push that tab all the way in and that just gets that tab hidden under what we just folded over on the inside. I think you can see that. Okay, just pressing that down. All right, so now it's time to close the bottom of our box. And I just pay attention to where the seam is. So this is right where we hid that tab and we've got a little seam on the back. That's gonna be the back of our box. So I'm going to, let's see, this is a hexagon. There's a couple of different ways you can fold these things over. It does not have to be pretty because we are going to um, put a little punched out circle to hide those flaps. But I'm just going to start kind of two by two. I'm going to put just a little strip of liquid glue and just meet up the opposite tabs. Again, this does not have to be perfect. Um, kind of holding it in place. I'm going to put my finger on, from the back side as well just to kind of hold that in place. And then I'll just again two by two and this will all be covered up and all adhered together with that punch out and then whoops that one popped up I didn't wasn't patient enough and then the last set of two there we go and if you're meeting them kind of straight across like that naturally the hexagon shape will um, square up and take shape. So it's kind of a little trick there. All right, so then the next thing, I'm just gonna do a quick punch out of, let's see, one and a quarter inch circle punch. And then I'll just put glue all along the bottom of there and then hide those little flaps. What I like to do is put, put the clap, cap on your glue. <laughs> if you don't, the glue can squirt out by doing this, but then I'm just gonna put it on the inside of the mug and press down so that um, that circle adheres to the bottom. It doesn't take long for this glue to adhere, but there we go. There we go. So that's a pretty bottom, you know, just in case anybody decides to look at the bottom of our project. You know when, people, when you give people handmade items, they inspect it. <laughs> That's just what people do. So, okay. Um, now we are going to take a teeny tiny strip. This measures half of an inch by two and a half inches. And you can alter the length of this depending on how big of a handle you'd like. But I'd go anywhere from two and a half up, like two and a half or two and three quarters would be pretty good. So we're going to do a little bit of stamping first. I'm going to bring in Garden Green. And then this teeny tiny heart stamp, which let me show you what it looked like. It's this guy. And what I love about Stampin' Up! is all the things that coordinate. It's not just colors, but look at the little heart pattern that's in this paper. The stamp set matches. I love it. So we're just going to stamp um, a series of hearts along the handle. And let's see, I'm doing this from a different angle. I know you don't want to see my head in the camera. 
<laughs> so I'm doing this from an angle. So excited y'all are here. Thank you so much for joining. I did forget to mention at the beginning of the video, this project I was inspired by fellow demonstrator Brigitte Keiling. She's a German demonstrator and she used some really cool Christmas paper. I think this was from last Christmas, the last holiday catalog. And I just love, so inspired by folks. All right, so I just did a series of hearts down that strip. Then we're gonna go ahead and use a bone folder and I'm just slightly curling kind of the top half of this strip and that's just gonna help us curve it to create that handle. I'm gonna bring out my trusty liquid glue again and I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue. Oh, oops. <laughs> if I could rewind, I would. Okay, you want the glue to go on the stamped side at the top. Okay, it's the bottom that we will put it on the back side, but for the top side, we're putting a little bit of liquid glue at the top there, and pay attention to where that little seam is. So this will be our back panel, and then I am gluing it. Let's see, hopefully you can see that. Gluing it like this. It looks funny because it's sticking straight up right now. Just gonna hold that in place for a few seconds. Then we'll put some glue down at the bottom, but also on the back side. And then we're gonna press that down to line up with the bottom edge of the coffee mug. And naturally it's gonna have that handle shape because of the way we glued it. So cute. All right, that's in place. So there we go, there's our little coffee mug. Isn't that cute? And I love that you can see the contrasting paper on the inside. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping and I'm gonna bring out the Big Shot. And we are going to use Pear Pizzazz, which is another coordinating paper here. I'm gonna stamp the sentiment, thanks a latte, on Whisper White. So Pear Pizzazz, Whisper White. Always looks a little funny right after you stamp it until that ink dries. All right, let me bring out the big shot, which will take up the entire screen, most likely. I am using it with the magnetic platform today. Um, this is an add on. So here's the tip so if you don't have the big shot, the starter kit is an awesome option for you to get the big shot. The big shot costs $110 and then you have another $15 to spend. And that way, every item you purchase that is can be used with the Big Shot, you'll get it a discount. So, um, and that discount will last you until um, January of 2018 if you were to sign up and get that starter kit special this month. So kind of a cool deal if you've been wanting to get the Big Shot. All right, so I'm just taking that oval die from the What's the name of that? Coffee Cups Framelits. Okay, I'm gonna just pop that out. And crackling noises are totally normal with the Big Shot. Always have people thinking it's breaking, but it's not. All right, let's get this big sucker out of the way. There's our sentiment. And then, let's see, I'm missing a piece of paper somewhere, so let me grab some soft sky. Okay, soft sky, and I'm gonna punch. Oh, see, I'm surrounded by chocolate, you guys. <laughs> it's all in the way. All right, I'm just gonna punch out. This is the one inch circle punch. And it just gives kind of a cool backdrop behind this oval. Something different. I always like to try to come up with different ideas for embellishments. Put a little bit of glue on the back there. Just center that over the circle. Thanks a latte. I love lattes. All 
All right, so we'll stick a dimensional on the back of that. Pop it on the front. And the most important part of all is the chocolate. So we'll just go ahead and put that in. Now you could leave it where it just kind of sticks out a little bit from the top, or you can push it all the way in, like there. And again, you can also alter the height of this mug as well. So look at that, a Ferrero Rocher or Lindor Truffle coffee mug. Let me grab a Lindor Truffle real quick and show you. I just think the, the Fer Ferrero Rochers are so beautiful with this gold foil. So yeah, these will also fit in as well. And you could have it stick out with the wrapping or hide those wrapping on the inside, but that'll fit in there as well. Cute, huh? So if you guys go ahead and make these, um, I would love to see what you make. You can certainly email me a picture or go ahead and post it on social media and just put the hashtag paper pixie. So hashtag paper pixie. And um, I'll look to look for your projects. I would love to see you make these. And again, what I love about Stampin' Up! is you can use all of their products and make this look totally different with different colors, different colorways, different sentiments. Um, the Christmas ones that I've seen have the sentiment running along the handle. Just super cute. So, yes, Robbie, I saw your comment. Um, you, this, there is a similar coffee mug project that you can make using the envelope punch board as well. So that may be a future tutorial coming from the Paper Pixie. So thank you guys so much for watching live. Um, I really appreciate it. I'd love for you to stop by my blog, thepaperpixie.com. Hi, Donna. Thank you so much. She has a question. Where can she get the instructions? So um, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, my blog post will go live. This video will be attached as well as all the um, measurements, score lines, as well as a picture of the template that I referenced during tonight's live broadcast. So all of that will post tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. at thepaperpixie.com. There's also an option in the upper right corner of my blog to subscribe. And that way you can get email updates every time I update my blog. So thank you all so much for joining. Again, come see me at thepaperpixie.com. I also have a YouTube channel full of video tutorials to make lots of 3D items like this. It's one of my favorite things to make. I love giving things out like this as random acts of kindness. And it's just awesome to just see the smile that it brings. So thank you again for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful and blessed day. You all take care. Bye. Thank you.